Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, my name is Adam. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Adam. All right. Hey, I was in the Marines. I was in uh, in Fallujah in 2004 with the Civil Hoorah. Affairs Unit. Yeah, we were off. Fallujah 2004 too. No kidding. No kidding. From then when we moved to Mazu. So what were you, 82nd Airborne? 101. 101. Because yeah, those were the yeah those were the two divisions that were in there at the time. We we relieved at Camp Fallujah. It was I, I think the 82nd we relieved. Yeah. So but yeah, 101 was around there at the time too. Good stuff. Well, can I ask you guys uh, from from my YouTube channel what what you're doing here and what you know basic information about what your mission is today? Well, our mission here we are members of the New York National Guards and mm -hmm. we conduct security operation in order to detect and deter acts of terrorism. And we're here in support of local law enforcement under the direction of the governor of New York. And that's basically. Is this is this the uh, ranking member here in charge? No. How you doing? Negative. He I'm, I'm Adam. The, I'm a You're also a specialist? This is just a dress Oh, excuse report. me. No, and I, sh I should know. I didn't see the patches on the arm. I was in the Marines. I was in Fallujah in 2004. We have a staff sergeant here, so of course. I was just looking. I'm like, there's so much There's so much bling there in the Army uniform. I was in Fallujah in 2004. <laughs> oh, well, that would explain it, it right? <laughs> uh, this, this, see, it's like Army uniforms are set up to confuse Marines. So we, we were like, it's we see of, shiny shit on, on, on the pels, oh shit, you know, we, we got to salute, versa. right? The same thing with the Marines too. <laughs> no, no, come on, Marine uniforms are all, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I've been out for a while now. But they're like, comparison, they're all they're all stripped down, right? Yeah, yeah it, for the most part it looks like it. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you guys a question, being here at, at Ground Zero on, on the 11th <laughs> anniversary of 9-11, oh, you don't want to be on camera? No, okay. thank you. I'm well, like, I'm running from each one I see. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that you're safer than you were 11 years ago? Safer? Well, I wasn't here at the time. Do you think the country is safer? Do I think the country? Yeah, I think so. Why is that? Because, because they have... Because this country. Because you're here? Yes. Where are you from, sir? I'm from Brooklyn. From Brooklyn? And you? Me, BX Borough. Holla at your and you? New York City. New York City? I was one of the first responders over here 11 years ago. All right, well then I should ask you this question. Do you feel safer than you did 11 yes, years I ago? Yes, I do. And why is that? Because I have confidence in the United States military. In the United States military. And what has the military done to make you feel safer here in New York? A lot in the last 11 years. Shoot. Um, pretty much winning the hearts and minds overseas, uh, performing outstanding services. May, may I ask what you did when you were... Uh, overseas? My first two tours in Iraq, I was transportation, 88 Mike. Yeah. yeah. My last tour, I was 11 Bravo, but I was a fox, pretty much the leading yeah. case. So, how do you think we're winning the hearts and minds if they're still conducting suicide bombs and you have Afghan soldiers turning around and, and shooting American trainers all the time? I can't vouch for Afghanistan, I can only vouch for Iraq. I've been to Iraq. Well, I can vouch for Iraq, man. I was, I was there in 2004 in Fallujah, and I know that was a while ago, but I was in civil affairs and our job was to actually talk to people and get out and, you know, win hearts and minds and shake hands and kiss babies and all that good stuff and pass out a lot of a lot of money, but it didn't really change anything. And we had guys that we were dealing with even, they would take money from us as contractors that would then turn around and use it to, to fund the insurgency. And that American tax money would go from the taxpayers to the government, to the military, to the dispersers to the Iraqis that were bought into this program and then it would go to fund IEDs. Well, like a wise man told me, that wise man was my dad, you can lead a horse to water but you can't force it to drink it. So you think that whatever our activity has been in the Middle East, despite the fact that all objective measurements, including public opinion surveys in the Middle East, would show that we are no more liked as a country or as a government than we were before 9/11/2001. You know, what, what, why do you think that that we're safer here, if if that's the case? Because I have confidence in the New York City Police Department as well as the Port Authority Police and as the military. So, service. what have they done that have, that has uh, changed their protocol that, since 9/11 that, that makes you feel safer? They heightened up security. Upset. OPSEC, you can't say? Nope. As a specialist in the U.S. Army, That's you're not, not allowed to disclose that information. Well, sir, That's true. you know not to form a Marine. There's some things well, we can talk about and some it, things we can't. It sounds like you have a kind of blind faith. Right. What about yes. you? It is, it is a blind faith? How about yourself? 
I don't. I mean, I mean I, do you feel? No, I feel. I, I'm if not anything, to, you know, right? Sure. No, no, no. I'm, I appreciate the dialogue. No, if anything, I feel less safe. But don't, don't think I'm gonna let you off the hook here. <laughs> if you run away from this, you're gonna be on film doing it, soldier. But no, I, I feel, I feel less safe because I understand at least from the part of the 9/11 Commission report that I think is true of why we were attacked on 9-11 that it's because we're over there it's blowback the cia describes it as blowback that when you occupy countries on the other side of the world uh, you know you piss people off and, and i can say from my own experience that i saw that firsthand and i know that the longer we have troops deployed in the middle east the more enemies we make because i would along. say Sorry, you gotta move along. Okay, am I not free to film here in public? You're not free to uh, block pedestrian traffic. Okay, well I'm gonna stand off to the side then, if that's all right, and continue the yeah. conversation that I'm you having can't with film these the gentlemen. Pass station; it's a security breach. Okay, well I'm, I'll keep it. I'll keep it on the on the fence here sure. and talk to these gentlemen. Move across the street. Excuse me, hey gentlemen, would you would you want to carry street. this conversation on and it, w without the interference of this officer that you trust so much to keep you yeah. safe from this dangerous camera? You don't want to. You don't want to continue dangerous. this conversation. Have a good day. Move across the street. We were just getting to something important and interesting here. You don't, sir. Do you want to talk about these issues? No, can I ask no. you a question, sir? No. I can't ask you a question. I just did. Sir, I'm not going to ask you again. Move across the street, please. I'm moving. Did you take an oath to the Constitution? Security officer. Yes, I did. I'm and I'm following his orders. Would you care to identify yourself, sir? Would you care to identify no. yourself? So I should just take orders from someone because he's standing in a suit? He gave you an order. And I'm following his order. And you're interfering. And I'm trying to have a conversation with him. Would you care to identify yourself? No? You're really creepy. <laughs> you're really disturbing. I'm not did, did you also swear an oath to the, to the Constitution? Is that... Is that do you, have, do you have a job that requires you to do that, sir? I am. Do you have a problem, sir? You look very uncomfortable. Are you uncomfortable being on camera? Are you okay, sir? Do you need... Sure looks that way. So, so now that I'm sufficiently partway across the street, it's okay for me to film behind all these other people just hanging out. That was certainly a disturbing encounter, but welcome to the police state of New York City. Making, making at, least, at least the soldiers that are here guarding the station, making, making them feel safer than they felt on September 11th, 2001. Excuse me, sir. I just want to introduce myself. My name's Adam. Okay, who you are? Okay. The officer told you to move, you move. Sure. Well, I'm, hey, I'm, that's over, man. I'm just here to introduce myself and say hi and... Adam? All right, Adam. I got you. All right? Good. Have a nice day. All right. Do you, do you care to identify yourself, sir? No, I don't. No? Okay. Hey, what's happening? My name's Adam. Nice to meet you. I was in the Marines. I was in Fallujah in 2004. I was trying to talk to some of the soldiers who are on duty over here. And they were talking, but you know what was funny? They were cool with it. The cops weren't. The cops came and interrupted. But I want a chance to talk to some soldiers. Hey, what's happening? My name's Adam. Are you guys here? I was in the Marines. I was in Fallujah in 2004. Hope you don't mind being recorded for my YouTube channel. So, uh, what what brings you here today? Uh, pay respect. Are you are you on duty? Or are you stationed out here? Uh, we're down from Massachusetts. I'm You're down from Massachusetts. This is the National Guard. National Guard. So so tell me what it means to come down here for this thing. You know, it's it's. Life changing, honestly. It's paying respect. One of the motivating things that motivated me to join the military. Now, I was, obviously, I was I was nine years old, but I had some family members that I got lost there. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it is what it is. Do you feel safer than you were on 9/11? Yes. Why is that? Um, I know that me and my friends, I have a lot of friends in the military. We protect our country, protect these people here. Well, what do you think caused 9/11? 
Um, off the terrace. Well, sure, but what do you th what do you think caused them to, to want to attack the, the the buildings that they did? I don't know. I was young. It's beyond me. Well, the government says, according to the CIA and according to the 9/11 Commission report, that it was blowback. That it was because of American intervention in the Middle East that was pissing people off that made them want to come and attack not America but the American government, right, and send a message. So, I mean, do you think that, that being in the Middle East more is going to make more terrorists or less? I don't know, sir. All I know is I, I trust my government. You trust your government? I do. Wait, 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 wait. How un-American is that? You trust your government? I do. Really? Do you know that, that, that this country was founded on the idea of not trusting authority and overthrowing unjust authority? Well, I can say I trust the guys, the higher ups that tell me what to do. Oh my god, we have a breaking story here. Ladies and gentlemen, the US military has been infiltrated by an anti-American government truster. <laughs> so what, what I, I was in the Middle East, I was in Fallujah in 2004 with the Marines, I was in civil affairs. You know, and, and one of the things that, that was really relevant to me while I was there was the CIA's concept of blowback, you know, that the more you have intervention in other people's affairs, the more they're going to resent it. And what, what I really learned was that we were making enemies faster than we could kill them. And, and that was the effect, and that goes back to the root cause of 9-11, at least according to the government story about why they attacked us, was that it was because of blowback because we were meddling in the Middle East. So, have you have you deployed? Not yet. No. Do you think that? You, what do you do? What's your MOS? I am a welder. You're a welder. Yes, sir. So, what kind? They don't call me sir. I was a sergeant. <laughs> Come on. Come on. All right. So you're a welder, and and what what kind of unit do you work in? What kind of equipment? Uh, Humvees, stuff like that. So, do you hope to deploy to the Middle East? If if we go, we go. But you're because you trust the government, right? Yep. Yep. So why do you trust the government? I don't know. I, just, I don't know. My brothers are in the military. All my family's been. It's just. It's Could it possibly crazy. be because it's easier than questioning the government? Maybe. I couldn't answer that. Maybe. Well, what do you think would happen if you didn't trust the government? What, what if you? What if your understanding of government was that it was a, a mechanism of, of exploitation that treated Americans and, and really. All governments treated its people around the world as, as tax cows. With that, how would you look at government differently if, if you had that that model of what government is? I, I would have to be there when it happened to see that. I honestly, I couldn't tell you. Well, I mean, you got history books, man. You can see all the things that government has done. You can go back to the uh, you know the the, the the war crimes committed, going back to you know our treatment of Native Americans to private congressmen. Oh, you're getting private congressmen. Difficult questions. Hold on, we were having a conversation. If we can speak with a sergeant Specialist? Or a Stay right there. Stay right. Yes. Well, don't presume into the. I'm staying the here. Okay. Oh wait, don't be me. I wait, wait, wait. I can't shoot into the thoroughfare. I didn't say that. I said don't walk into the. Oh, don't walk into the block. Come on, God, ladies and gentlemen, please keep walking. All right. Wait. wait. Well, it's interesting to me that our own government is watching Facebook in the first place. No kidding. Sergeant, are you having fun? Thank you for protecting us from his penis.